Which light fighter in Star Citizen dominates the skies and will leave the rest in the dust? The past week I've been training an AI model to rank all the light fighters in Star Citizen, giving us a data driven result and not just opinions. We're going to find out which ship is actually the best and which ship will leave you vulnerable in battle. As you know, Star Citizen is a game of strategy, skill and the right equipment. And when it comes to dogfighting, the choice of your light fighter can make or break your mission. That's why I've used the advanced AI model to crunch the numbers, everything from speed, maneuverability, weapon systems, shields and so forth. We are going to dive deep into each fighter's stats to rank them from the best to the worst. In this video we'll be covering the light fighter that offers the best combinations of speed and firepower. We're also going to discover some ships that might be hidden gems, even if you're an advanced pilot. We're also going to go over what makes a light fighter superior to the other light fighters and most importantly the tactical advantage and disadvantage of each fighter. Starting in the D tier and there's only one ship in the D tier which is the RSI Aura LN. Of course this is a beginner friendly ship. It has good shields, that's all that I can say since it has 3000 shields HP, HP which all the other ships except the Edo has. It lacks in speed and firepower compared to the others, so of course it's going to be in the D tier list. If you have an Aurora LN, I'm sorry to say, you're probably going to have to upgrade that ship and buy a new ship in game. And now we're moving to the C tier fighters, which is going to be the Co Mustang Delta, Aegis Gladius, Anvil Arrow, and of course saying the Aegis Gladius and the Anvil Arrow, Arrow is in the C tier actually saddens me, but it is what it is, this is what the AI gave us, so I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, let's give you the reasons why they are actually in the C tier. There's nothing really special about the Mustang Delta. It has balanced firepower and maneuverability, it's good for new players, but overall there's nothing really that stands out from, from the ship. Of course the Aegis Gladius was in the past one of the top tier fighter ships, but since then it has fallen. It still is an excellent dogfighter with great maneuverability. The Aegis Gladius is still a reliable ship, but it's starting to show its age since there are so many newer ships that got introduced to the game. Moving on to the Arrow. The Arrow is really fast and agile, of course. It's ideal for hit and run tactics, but it has a 1500 shield, where the other light fighters actually have 3000 shield, so the annual Arrow with the lower shield doesn't help it since it's easy to kill and also it has lower firepower and durability so you have to really be a good pilot to fly with the arrow and use its agility to your advantage. The only drawback of the anvil arrow I would say is that it has such a low shield. Yeah, it doesn't help. Now we're moving on to the B tier fighters which is going to be the Origin 325A, the anvil hawk, we're only going to mispronounce this but the Opoa Cardual. Those are the three ships in the B tier. Let's start off with the Origin 325A. It's of course a very stylish ship and it's also versatile. It's also a very fast ship. It actually matches the, the Avenger Titan, but it also has great firepower and great speed. So it's a very fast ship. It has good firepower, but it's still a B tier. Moving on to the Anvil Hawk. It has strong defenses and of course it also has an EMP that can disable enemy ships. It's a reliable choice for bounty hunters. It might not be the fastest ship on the list but it's really reliable. Now moving to the Opoa Cardual. Of course it's a very difficult name to pronounce if you're flying the ship. It's a really agile ship. It's super fast like the maneuverability on this ship is actually the highest on the list. It's the most maneuverable ship probably in the game. So whenever you fly the ship, you can probably dance around your enemies from and attack them from unexpected angles just because the maneuverability is so high on the ship. But it has relatively low firepower, which means you will have to rely on your pilot skills to secure a win. So the ship is very good if you're a very good pilot, but it's going to take a little bit longer to destroy your target just because the firepower is so low on the ship. Now we're moving on to the ship that is in the A tier which is going to be the Expedia Blade and the Expedia Talon. These two ships might surprise you. So why is the Expedia in the A tier list? Well, it's the ship with the highest damage. So from all the light fighters, this ship has the highest damage. 
But the only trade-off for the ship is that it has low durability. So the hull HP of the ship is a bit low. Moving on to the X Xperia Talon. Why is the Xperia Talon on the fourth spot? Well, it's extremely durable or solid maneuverability. So it's good for staying in a fight a bit longer. The main advantage of the Xperia Talon is that it has a very high durability with the hull HP. And it's solid with maneuverability and a little bit of firepower. So it's, it's, it's a well-balanced ship in that category. Now, of course, we're going to move to the S-tier. There's only two ships. It's going to be the Drake Buccaneer and the Aegis Avenger Titan. The Drake Buccaneer has the second highest damage in terms of raw damage from all the light ships, but it makes up for it with blazing speed and agility. The fighter is designed to hit hard and fast with a combination of firepower speed that lets you overwhelm your opponent before they even know what hit them. It might be tricky to handle, so the maneuverability can be a little bit tricky to handle, but in the hands of an experienced pilot, the Buccaneer is an absolute beast in combat. So why is the Avenger Titan in the, in the S list or the S tier list? The ship is really versatile, offering a solid balance between offense and defense. It has impressive firepower and is one of the fastest ships on the list. Also, the Titan is so reliable since it's a great starter ship. So its speed, its firepower and its, and its hull HP pool makes it a top contender in the S tier. And that's the complete ranking list for the Star Citizen Light Fighters. But just because AI ranked these stats doesn't mean they're correct. As we know, humans are more intelligent. For example, here's all the stats that I weighed against the ships. As you can see, everything is at 100%. So the AI weighed all the stats at 100%. A real human being will probably value boost speed and maneuverability way more than, for example, Hull HP. So, of course, I went to the Avenger 1 Discord. I know there's a lot of good PvP players, and I asked them which of these stats would they actually prioritize. And they actually said they would pr prioritize maneuverability, boost speed, and SEM speed. So, maneuverability, boost speed, and SEM speed, they would prioritize over Hull HP and damage output. If we would take into account just these three stats, for example, boost HP is 100%, maneuverability is 100%, and SEM speed is 100% important, we'll just say sealed HP is at 50%, and also damage output is at 50%. Now, of course, we're not going to worry about cross-section. Even though cross-section is important, let's just say it's 0%. And hull HP, let's also go with 0%. So in a true sense, this is probably what a PvP player would rank a real PvP ship. So the ranking will change. But of course, we can change this around. But let me just show you if this was a true PvP comparison. And these were the three stats that the PvP players value. The rankings will change. Let me just show you here. So I'm quickly going to rearrange this ranking. As you can see, if we change the, the weights of the ranking around, the rankings will also change. So it's no longer an AI ranking, but a human ranking. And we will see that the Avenger and the Origin is on top, and also the Expedia Blade, just because these ships have faster boost speed and so forth. So it has a nice amount of damage, a nice amount of boost speed and maneuverability. These would be the top three ships if you were only fighting with light fighters. You can see the Buccaneer move to the fourth spot, and the Avenger actually took the first spot. But the Avenger Titan was also in the second spot for the AI ranking. So meaning the Avenger Titan is a really strong ship, an overall good ship for patch 3.24. It took me a hell of a long time to design this tool for myself. I'm probably going to share it in my own community. So I won't be making this available to the public just because I'm not able to make it available yet since I do need to build a community for myself and on my YouTube channel. So I'll place this little tool in my Patreon and in my YouTube memberships. You can also get this tool on Ko-fi if you just want the tool and you don't want to be part of my membership. I think the AI rankings is still relevant just because the AI ranked the overall stats giving each stat equal weight. For example, every stat is 100%. But of course, if we are going to Go off human rankings, boost speed, 
and maneuverability is going to be much higher than, for example, damage output. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It took me a really long time to figure out how to build this tool, how to actually work with the AI model and develop this tool. Before you go, is there any other ships that you want to see in this list? Maybe I should do all fighters in one list and rank all fighters against each other. What is this ranking criteria? For example, we have boost speed, cross section. What weights would you assign to each little ranking here? Would it be 100%? Would it be 20%? Let me know in the comments how you would rank these stats.